uh, check audible. Yes, um, audible and visible. Uh, timer dong, Pak. Ini kau lock Oke. Okay. Uh, if you want to pay, just type in the chat box. Uh, I will probably accept one. Hmm. I'll start my speech. In three, two, three, two. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ha, ha, ha. Aku buka noteku dulu ya, guys. Sorry, layarku terlalu banyak. Bertanda. Bertanda, bertanda, bertanda. Oke okay, oke. Okay. Uh, I will start my speech in three, two, one. Inequality of resources in opposition side is something that would normalize, destroy the essence of law to save the most vulnerable people. How to speak for UGMC in grand final? Three important set up before UGMC to my argument. One, under our side, we will oblige all private lawyer to go through a period of service at the state or attorney office to get their bar of certification with two mechanisms. One, anyone who wants to become a private lawyer need to do public service at state attorney office. Under our side, another mechanism such as bar test and other internship in private law firms still exists because it can go hand in hand. But second, there will be minimum certain period of time for you to do certification, usually two years. This already happened in status quo when we oblige people to do internship for private law firm before they get certification from Pradi, for example, in Indonesia. We also more than willing to engage in scenario when obligation to do internship in private law firm will be combined with public service in state attorney office. For example, one year in state attorney and one year in private law firm. That's not a problem. So opposition cannot enter this debate with argument that it will make people less incentivized to become lawyers because it's taking longer time right now. But even if you need to engage with longer time, we will prove to you later why it's okay. But second, I think the debate about right of fresh graduate to pursue career that they like is not important because of core framing. One, this debate is from the perspective of government, it means the benefit that you should pay as a judge is the benefit that gives the largest scope of benefit or save the most vulnerable people. But second, they are not vulnerable given the fact that most of fresh graduate of law is privileged. We're talking about people that can go intern in SSAK, for example, or go to Jakarta, or fresh graduate come from UI or UGM law student that need to pay UKT that is so expensive every semester, for example. But thirdly, this is temporary obligation. It means after one or two years, you will have freedom to pursue career that you want at best this semester. But fourthly, even if you show that we are limiting the options, notice that freedom can always be limited when it's harmful. I will prove to you later why, why it's indeed harmful in their side if you give full freedom to lawyer to directly go to private law firm, therefore it's justified to do this. Two argument in my speech. First, why it's balancing the perspective of fresh graduate law student and breaking their own echo chamber. What is the problem exists within the young Young, young lawyers right now. Four layers of analysis. One, they are really elitist because private law firm only expose you with the idea of privileged law issues such as dispute settlement between corporation, making business contract, or government tender that only involves small demographic of people that makes your knowledge so narrow, for example, or not understand holistically the idea of law. But second, I think most of the people live in capitalistic world such as Jakarta that involve uh, in, and really engaging with law. So most likely, law issue that get glorified is something that is such as private business law or portray as prestige. And people don't care about public law or criminal law, for example, because they think that it's not more so relatable with their life in, on a daily basis, for example. But thirdly, this, we also most likely talking about people that come from rich family. For example, the fact that law is something there is, uh, you know, like uh, keturunan or based on descendant, for example, because most of the Europeans is also the one that having a private law firm, for example, or also become a private lawyer. So most of the time, they also pressure you and push you to also taking the same field, for example, or focus on the same type of law. But fourthly, I think the cycle keep continues because people and media keep glorifying private law as the most famous lawyer keep going in private law. We're talking about Otto Hasibuan or Hotman Paris, any sort of legal reform concentrated on private business law. Therefore, under our side of the house, the moment you oblige these people to engage to state attorney office, for example, with more diverse keys, such as private law, talking about petty crime that access on a daily basis of people in grassroots, talking about poor people, exposure, there is more niche case that probably... Uh, happy and happy doesn't care for example i think this is the moment you can give more exposure and be be breaking their own echo chamber because let's be real that in both sides of the need to agree that most of the you know like lawyers to allow student is privileged but i think that exactly this is the moment that we can finally get long-term exposure because right now after you do internship in this state attorney office you see how they work on a daily basis you work directly with boomer in state attorney office and see their perspective of law for example you learn about civil law that happened in indonesia traditionally but second i think there will be create a form of relatability with co-worker and senior attorney form you able to sympathize with them for example and realize the issue inside the attorney system therefore more discussion will exist more exposure for you in the micro level there's an first argument we prove, prove to you that it's give better one for you as individual but even if we talk about macro level before move to my second argument i still engage to that before that opposition we have any pi three two one second argument talking about why it gets better 
department for state attorney in law sector in general. I'm not talking about macro level benefit in my second argument. Four layers of analysis, but before that, one small context. In status quo, there's less incentive for law face graduate to choose to work in state attorney office due to the several reasons. Talking about prestige, over qualification of some field of law, such as investment and private law. This is bad because of four reasons. One, law market is oversaturated in opposition of the house because almost all students want to go to AHP, HHP, ABNR. Therefore, there is inequal distribution of human resources access in status quo because students more incentivized to learn and contribute to specific law industry and neglect the rest of it. It makes the competition being bad because many smart students will concentrate only in one field and the rest of it will full of the dumbest students that get outcompete in their side of the house. The distribution of good human resources will be really unequal in their side of the house. But second, this is bad because it means less developed human resources will enter state attorney office because this is the only option that they get because dumb students like Satmika cannot enter AHP in opposition to the house. This is bad because state attorney office is the one who handle public case related to many people such as criminal law. It means in so far as dumb people keep entering state attorney because this is the only field available for them, there will be many problems actually in production, implementation, and evaluation of public law in general. Because in both sides of the house, state attorney office hold so much power in status quo related to uh, law that produced by the, certain, by the country. That is why incarceration happened in status quo, in, especially in law in Indonesia, and many unfair prosecution happen in status quo because you give too much power on dumb people without check and balance. But secondly, and thirdly, I think sure, we agree that opposition might say that state attorney office is bad in both sides. But we flip this by saying that more check and balance exist under our side with more young smart law students entering this field. This way, internal reformation will likely to exist because there will be people that constantly challenging that practice from state attorney office, challenging the bad execution and prosecution access in state attorney office on uh, apathetic boomer judge access in state attorney office. Opposition cannot say that they will be apathetic and don't care. Besides, because it will affect their bar certification uh, graduation, but they will also may need to maintain their image because insofar as they become the intern in state attorney office, this also affects their CV. Therefore, they don't want to affiliate with the corrupt state office, for example, or they want to label as something there is uh, as, as someone there is a work half as under opposition side of the house. Therefore, people still rational under opposition side of the house and more pressure for them to care exactly because if it's not about reliability, it's about pragmatic benefit that they want to achieve. But fourthly, we posit that this obligation is the one that counterbalance the existing domain of private law firm in status quo. We're talking about private law that actively do CSR, such as uh, many private law that is penetrate and infiltrate in FAUI, for example, provide more money, more resources to do advertisement because they have more bargaining power and financial power. Therefore, it's important to do this exactly to give informed consent for people because right now we also give balance comparative what is good and bad of state attorney office and what is good and bad of private law firm. There's why opposition cannot say that in their side, people will go to state attorney office anyway if they like because in status quo, there's balance of exposure. Risky cannot say that in status quo people have choice because the fact that almost more than 90% of FAUI students go to private law firm is proof that there is imbalance of exposure towards this. We prop what, what benefit that we talk to you? We talk about not only this is benefit the most vulnerable people because under our set of those will be more check and balance for example, but opposition cannot say that oh, they will be uh, only stick one or two years for example because right now they will still go to private law firm anyway. At least in the meantime during internships that have an office still constantly get a good internship and regeneration still constantly happen. Therefore, I think at least the benefit under our side of the house, that attorney office get better intern in opposition, they get nothing. There is why there will balance the uh, power of private law firm and also start attorney office, better law sector in general, proud to open the debate. Thank you so much, Prime Minister. Now to open the case of opposition, I welcome Leader Bob here, here. Sorry, give me a sec. Um, and... Yep, hi. Uh, POI perfect method, please use the raise and whoa, let me give me a second. Um, yeah, use the raise and feature. Um, other than that, uh, use the chat as well. Pronounce he, him. 
Uh, yeah. Um, slightly before I start, very proud to represent UI in grand finals again. Um, it's been quite a while since UI um has returned to the grand finals. One of the first time in a few years. Um, very proud. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Starting my speech in three, two, and one. The question I'd like to address to Tere and the rest of government bench is that if you want fresh graduates to become public lawyers, why is it that they need to serve a time in the government? Mm -hmm. Why don't you fix the system and tell them that, you know, it's okay to become public lawyers specifically because you want to fix the system of underpaying them and underappreciating mm -hmm. them all the time. The current system indicates an issue on the fact that these public lawyers are continuously, for example, degraded and taken away out of their jobs. Probably not that that is not the you know right choice of word. But exactly right now we see an underappreciation and that's the reason as to why you know they, they said under government side of the house how people continuously want to become private lawyers is exactly because right now the state is not treating them uh, the, the treating the public lawyers properly exactly that is the system that we want to fix under our side of the house we're proud to oppose slightly though on their side of the house it's a full obligation for these people to actually opt into i think it's pretty clear in their argument but under our side of the house it's, it's very important to note we value the freedom of the people to choose whether or not they want to opt to become private or public lawyers but the burden that government has to prove why is it likely for them to actually for example be or why is it a must for them for example to actually cater to the public lawyer system as opposed to just you know staying in their lane and you know working in private law firms whatsoever two arguments i'm going to bring here firstly on the principle why is it a form of government obligation to fix the climate for public public lawyers secondly better lawyer performance under our side of the house generally first let's talk about the principle right the premise of this argument especially oh yeah the the yeah the heading is why is this a form of government obligation to fix the climate of public lawyers and the premise is this this house in this motion talks about the state and the state has the principal obligation to ensure that the public lawyers are functional insofar as these are the same individuals, same representatives who fight for the state, who, who represent the state in a lot of court proceedings. What are the problems that we like to identify three structural layers here? Firstly, right now, people, uh, the state takes like too much lawyers, like especially in the especially in the mechanism on their side of the house, whether it's private or public to actually become, you know, people who serve within the state authority. Like if the state does this, they no longer have to pay, for example, and has less incentive to give back to the system, especially because there is a continuous cycle of private lawyers continues to cycle. Note that private lawyers usually are people who probably don't care that much if, for example, the pay that they get, uh, if they have to, for example, serve a period of time, like a year or two is not that large, but it's very much effective to the public lawyers, for example, that they've already characterized themselves under government, who are probably, for example, underprivileged and therefore need a lot of money. So exactly note that the scarcity, for example, of payment targets a certain amount or a certain demography that's very important, which is, this, uh, you know, the public lawyers. Secondly, this is where I want to emphasize first what it looks like. Like state has little compensation to public lawyers, but what does it look like and why do people do not want to become a public lawyer in the current state of school? Three things. Firstly, not only do they receive small, small fees or payment granted towards them as a form of appreciation, for example, or a form of payment generally as they are serving the country in a form of a job, but secondly, they're not, for example, appreciated enough by the people or the government because insofar as you hear people say that, oh, the system has failed us, the, the first actor that you blame are the specifically the, the state law, uh, the public lawyers specifically representing you for a case, because that's how, for example, the system in Indonesia works, where probably like you ask, for example, for the public lawyers to actually represent you because you're representing the state, for example, if someone has already wronged you in a court. But thirdly, it's the fact that right now, a lot of the media coverage that highlights court proceedings, for example, highlights only the private lawyers who are able to create this image upon themselves, but not necessarily the public lawyers, because the scarcity and the huge difference in the power that they're able to grant upon themselves to create that reputation is something that is significantly smaller. Mm -hmm. So exactly, the highlight towards this, this, the you know public lawyers inherently has such a huge gap to the point where that, that is exactly the reason as to why, for example, people want to opt to be, being private lawyers. But thirdly, you need to concede then that the, the, the there's most likely going to be a quota, for example, or there's a preference later on in within the state attorneys late uh, when there are inter to uh, like both. Uh, forms of lawyers are intertwined, like both private and public. And what happens then, most likely there's going to be preference to continuously, for example, utilize the private lawyers. And therefore, the public lawyers are going to be set aside, for instance, or the people who have, for example, the better capability are trained more in the period of the time where they have to serve. And therefore, the people that later on remain to become the public lawyers are going to be set aside and therefore not going to be, uh, you know, not going to be prioritized. 
Therefore, on the other side of the house, why is this a form of uh, government obligation and why is it important? And there are three things or four things I'd like to emphasize here. Firstly, is that what you want to make sure exists is that there's an increase towards the treatment towards public lawyers specifically. Yeah. Note that under our system, the moment that you allow, for example, only people who want to become public lawyers to actually serve the state attorney, then these are the same people that are willing, for example, to not be paid that much inherently because they want to defend yeah. you as a state. But exactly, because probably that is their main interest, you still have to give back that obligation towards them that they've already, for example, created this image upon themselves and act pursuing classes to become a public attorney, a, pu a public a lawyer that really wants to defend you, for example, as a state. So precisely, this treatment has been given back as a form of appreciation that inherently they have chosen, for example, to become someone that wants to represent, to represent the state as opposed to, for example, wanting to villainize you in the form of like private lawyers. But secondly, it's also the fact that you're going to increase the interest towards being the public lawyers. I've already explained to you why is it likely that people do not want to opt, want to opt into this. What are the forms of mechanisms that you, it's going to be fixed under our side of the house the moment that this is implemented. Firstly, probably then you will have to, for example, invest more on the fact that there's going to be more fees given towards these people. More, for example, appreciation that you know that probably the reason as to why you need to enhance, therefore, your system is by empowering the people that only want to work for you as opposed to the private lawyers that later on you want to invite under government side of the house. Exactly. That's how, for example, the interest will be, will be enhanced because you as a system also have more intention to actually increase it. But thirdly, we also allow the agency for people to actually choose what they want to inherently, right? I don't have to dictate how, for example, the agency of individuals to pursue the career that they want is something that is important, but inherently, just in, imagine how you're limited, for example, by a certain individual from pursuing what you want. You don't like that. So exactly, we don't want that. We don't want people to be dictated there as well. But lastly then, like if you truly want private lawyers, for example, to thrive or pu public lawyers to thrive, it's a mismatch solution on their side of the house if you want to implement everyone, for example, to enter the state attorney. Like there's not going to be sustainability of people because the, the cycle continues to uh, to happen and therefore there's no, for example, capability for the government to realize that and to actually want to give feedback to the public uh, lawyers. So exactly, on the other side of the house, we give the, the realization to the state to actually compensate, for example, and give back. Why is this important? Firstly, not only are you going to enhance your own system as a state, but secondly, these people who have the moral obligation linked and tied towards you are going to be the people that you're going to reward again under our, uh, under our side of the house. But slightly, an extension on the last 20 seconds, like why is it that still generally lawyer performances are going to be better. Firstly, it's the fact that private lawyers have, it's going to have a division on their side of the house on the, what they have to learn. Like they have to relearn all of the subjects because the subject between being a public and a private lawyer is going to be very different. On the other side of the house, we allow segmentation for them to process on their respective career prospects that they decide to wish and therefore later on the development happens in this process. With, this, with all of this, we're very proud to oppose. Thank you so much, Leader of Op. Now to uh, extend a case of government, I welcome Deputy Prime Minister. Here, here. Hi, am I audible and visible? Yes, audible and visible. Cool. Before I start, I'd like to thank um, the and Satwika and the coaches from um, GMBS UKM for the support. Um, I made it to the grand final of Al Saudi at last. Um, anyway, um, the I preference is unmute and I will start my speech in three, two, three, two, one. According to the UADC manual, saying flop three times is not necessarily a valid rebuttal. So I don't want to hear Jones talk about my response as flop, flop, flop uh, after this. Anyway, moving on to the main case. Look. The main contention is why they must be obliged, right? Because Risky talks so much about these interns won't have the power that these interns don't really going to be interested in them. So yeah, we bite the bullet. They are most likely not going to be interested. But the burden that we are trying to prove here is that why by 
by at least making them aware by obliging them to go through period of service, it at least makes this issue more aware, more exposed to the public. Therefore, there is more political will to reform. Because currently, the system of the state attorney is problematic. You've seen the sloppy investigation process because of lack of standard operation procedure, lack of quality human resources, because all the good law students went through private law firms instead. And therefore, the prosecution, the execution of the um, punishment itself become rushed. This is especially important considering the context that in status quo, there is an overwhelming burden to the entire criminal justice system. You see this with courts where um, so many documents just dianggap dibacakan. Trust me, I watch far too many um, legal cases being tried because of my PLKH duties. Therefore, the quality of the enforcement of the law is very, very low. How does this manifest? Two, two things. One, it leads into the under-incarceration on rich people. Because the rich people can just hire good lawyers. They have the capitals. They can manifest themselves. They can get away from justice exactly because they can hire the most, the best lawyers themselves. Therefore, what will happen? It's not just the state unable to enforce the law. It's also the victims unable to get the closure. But secondly, exactly when this happens, they have the incentive to over-incarcerate poor people sure. because the defendant have no capital to pay for lawyers. They're probably going to be defended by pro bono lawyers. Therefore, it is going to be an easy target, especially with their performance against the rich defendant becoming the main issue. So you got to prosecute someone. Why not target the easy ones? The comparative, at least on, this, at least on the individual level, sure. when you are later obliging this uh, freshman law student, is that the byproduct of the service itself, you are able to be sensitive in enforcing private laws. You are tendering state favorable contracts, for example, that helps the vulnerable actors because you see them firsthand during your time in the state attorney service. Hence, even if you don't work in public law, it's still going to be better off. But secondly, there are points regarding lack of appreciation and lack of pay. It's something that is symmetrical because the comparative is something that is symmetrical because the comparative without this obligation is still you have to be interned in private law firm to ensure that you are able to get your um, birth certification. You're still going to be underpaid. You're still going to lack of, you're still going to lacking appreciation. But at least on our side, you are able to make the meaningful change to the people who need it the most, which is the victims. But the comparative to the system is the most important in this debate. Because one, you are able to right. help the process of prosecution in and of itself. This in and of itself is important because attorneys have lots of jobs. In Indonesia alone, you have to investigate the criminal um, case to yourself. You have to prosecute at the same time and execute the punishment. And note, multiple cases happening at the same time, meaning the quality of the prosecution is most likely not going to get good because of their lacking of human resources, exactly because of the lack of interest. Therefore, any sort of addition to the system, to the attorney service, is already going to be appreciated because it lessens the burden of the uh, people who actually work there for full time as the attorneys. Therefore, your betterment, your betterment of the full time workers who are actually interested on the public system, as Risky trying to posit, is only going to happen on us because you are not overworking them later. But secondly, you help the process of the legal reform and solving the legal issues of the attorney office. Exactly when the elitist law student with idealism put in the problematic state attorney office, it will create the exposure to the public through social media, for example, because of the tendency of government only taking issues seriously when they're, when they're already viral. Therefore, there is going to be push for reform. Exactly this sort of reform never happened when there is no public attention put into the problems of the criminal justice system, only put in private law systems. So when you put the attention on this, you are able to kickstart the, the process of the reform that the opposition so trying to push. Therefore, the prerequisite of their argument is ours. This is important because Risky said, uh, Risky pro probably said earlier that uh, the service lawyer would be set aside the, um, they are not going to have powers. Okay, I will directly engage this because I admit my argument can only run if this happens. So for structural reason, why it happened? One, exactly when you oblige 
the people to do so, they would most likely going to outnumber the amount of people. So therefore, it is going. They have the strength in numbers. Secondly, the the full time workers are going most likely going to have the gratefulness to these workers exactly because it lessens their workload. Oh, before sex, yes, POI. Um, I am confused. Like, why are the vulnerability of the victims our obligation of me as fresh grad rather than the obligation of the state to make conversation better to make people to want, want to become public lawyers? Well, because the state cannot do so because they are lacking the human resources, but rather we are adding the human resources, which is the prerequisite of change. Anyway, third one. At least when you are aware of the problem of the criminal justice system, you have the willingness to speak up probably viralize the problem, or at least talk about it in the legal circles to ensure that the people in power already have aware of the issue. Therefore, at least they know what can be solved, what can be do to solve this problem. Because at least, even if you are apathetic, this is something that is happened symmetrically. But we, our burden is that we prove that the gray area people will be able to create change, create change exactly when you are obliging this. Therefore, the freshman lawyers, which the idealism, the energy, and the passion, you, a, you are able to regenerate every once in a while. This is the prerequisite of change, exactly because the failure of change will impact the most vulnerable actor, which is the lower class people in high criminal areas. At least you have bright human resources always revolving around to, to continue check and balancing your system, and at least kickstart the process of the reform itself. Thank you so much, Deputy Prime Minister. Now to extend the case of opposition, I welcome Deputy Leader up here, here. Am I audible? Uh, can you hear me and see me? Yes, loud and clear and also visible. Hey, thank you. Um, yes, again, before I start, uh, uh, PIs through chat, please. And Papa, PIs through chat, my name is Jones, DLO. Uh, small, small shout out towards the project officer of ALSA Ecom 2024. You're doing amazing, Awan. Good job, Shotiti. Um, and also people who supported me, like Ichao, Olive, and Sharon, or also the committees. Thank you. Hey. No, no shout out for my teammates. <laughs> All right. Wait, sorry, water. The whole opposition speech is a mismatch solution. The main claim is that private lawyers are able to sympathize and help the government. There's a missing nuance under the proposition case. Private lawyers work differently on what state attorneys do in administration processes. Yeah. You don't represent an individual or a company. You are representing the government and the administration law or criminal law, like what Tara said. This is vastly different from what private lawyers learn, like econ or hukum pete. So this kills two things under their side of the house. A, their whole argument about private lawyers can help government. They can't. They don't understand how. At best, they are told to summarize the facts in cases or whatever the state attorney tells you to do because it's a temporary obligation. So they won't teach you anything advanced because you will leave anyway. So their benefits quite marginal. This is what my mentors or my cutting has already done, like working in Makama Agung, for example. They don't really do anything process like that's very beneficial for the state anyways. They just summarize cases anyway. So it's not going to be far beneficial on their side. But B, private lawyers are not able to sympathize if it's an obligation. I don't care how people uh, feel, but if you are forced and obliged to do something, you're less likely to feel sympathized as well. But secondly, I question how. Remember, they presumably will work as an assistant or to help the government with the public cases and not all cases are huge cases that will tuck your heart. It's really boring cases about crimes of not wearing a helmet, for example, when you use a motorcycle or someone did petty crimes like stealing, for example. So you won't feel sympathy from this anyways because why would you? Like, like they give you high rate cases when you are only like two years like in experience, for example. There's no personnel under government as well. So note judges that the prerequisite under government to win the debate is to prove that there's sympathy and exposure. If we already prove 
to you that there's certain obligation doesn't give you sympathy or the efficacy of the government will not work anyways, then you cannot win this debate at all. Um, like a couple of responses on rebuttals before extension on why they were some people's interest on being public lawyers. Firstly, they talk about how current status quo, they don't care about public or criminal law. Two things. One, exactly. If they don't, they also don't understand how to do this in practice, right? If you don't already understand the concept of the theories of those kinds of administration process, then you're going to do way worse in practice as well. So you're going to do way worse in this kind of like public or like those kinds of administration processes. It's going to be way worse for the government anyway. Secondly, even if they do, I don't, I don't think you have the right to dictate what type of jobs these lawyers want to do. Like all of you wants to be private lawyers under UGM as well. Even if in university, you've learned about public and criminal law as well, right? In your first year or second years. But a small nuance here. University already gives limitation on taking the classes to be private lawyers. This is a real thing happening to universities. So more people are not more interested in public law, for example, or criminal law. But also this existing socialization or webinars to grasp the inter interest of new law students to attract them towards public law and criminal law itself. So because of those kinds of like, um, like separation of those kinds of socialization, socializing that exists, there's already quite a high like margin, for example, or quite a high quantity of people who are more attracted, attracted towards like, criminal law and public laws anyways. I think it's abhorrent for the state to still limit the rights of the young black students in choosing what career they want to uplift their own economic status. I don't care about the rich family lawyers analysis that is symmetric on both sides anyways. So secondly, there's a fun argument from Jason that talk about bad practice in state attorney. He wants to help persecution. What? If the state are unable to enforce the law, why is it the obligation for young graduate students to enforce the job or the states? This was never proven by the government. Like the efficacy is also not there. Judges, remember, do the reason why most famous lawyers are old and balding is because you need experience to be good. You need a lot of like, like dozens of like decades for you to actually have those kinds of experience and yeah. le learning about like hundreds of cases. But what they want is newly graduated students to help with the prosecution. That I wonder what kind of mechanization they could give to you or what kind of likelihood that those kinds of efficacy will be good when you are trying to handle criminal like law processes, for example, or the court proceeding of certain administrative law. But secondly, even if it's going to be good, I still wonder under both of the house, we can also say it's also good because again, it's not like all public lawyers are bad. They're still going to be good public lawyers anyways, or like those sets of new law students that are also interested in public laws anyways. So it's going to be symmetric under both of the house. So second argument, uh, no, no, not second argument, I mean like the third response was about second argument from Terry. He wants young, smart students, very, very fine because um, state attorney, there's no, there's like no prestige and there's over glorification of private lawyers. One, we reject this premise because young, smart students will not like to be forced anyways. If they also have this interest, they're able to go towards like a state attorneys anyways. But secondly, even if that's the case, it doesn't matter because for you to have a good CV to submit to haha, pay, haha, pay, or etc., you need job experience. And where do you get that? You work in state attorneys because they're open for new law students that haven't graduated. So I challenge that there's already exposure under our of the house that exists. Like most of my friends work for Kementri and Pertahanan, for example, at the Supreme Court. I'm going to work in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs literally next month for two months, for example. So I will know about how how government process works anyways. So those kinds of exposure yeah. argument will not work on the dirt of the house because you are already exposed by how those kinds of process works anyway when you're internship, for example, and trying to gain your work experience as a law student. So it's not going to make sense on the dirt of the house anyways. Last rebuttal about how state has a bad resources by coming from the POIs from Jason. What? That's a state jobs to fix. Again, this is problem mismatch solution under the dirt of the house. What are the solutions that I can give you as a current law student that are still dumb? Socialization and similar for public and, and, and criminal law. You can give more subsidized and allocation for resources so more people want to want to like join, for example. You can give better wages and better working condition, for example. You can fire all of the corruptors, for example. All of those kinds of reasons is still adequate enough reason for the state to try to attract more people. What is not right or what is unfair for the state to do is to limit and obey all those kinds of people to try to work. I don't care if it's a temporary obligation. You are ruining those kinds of new law graduates to try to be a better like advocate, for example, or better lawyers in working because you're trying to limit or mitigate what they're learning. Because you cannot just learn private laws itself You and the dares of the house. You still need to learn the concept behind criminal law and make sure to do good so you can pass the bar certification exam on the dares of the house. So if you want to learn all those types of law, at the end of the day, you will be way more stressed under the dirt of the house or under duress and you're not be, you're not able to actually do all of that anyways. So it's going to be far worse under the dirt of the house. A few eyes. Over time anyway. So small extension then regarding why um it's better for public lawyers. Well, one, again, public lawyers under the dirt of the house, we feel more inferior, we feel more privileged entering the market. Exactly. If they want to 
argue that private lawyers are better than public lawyers. Exactly, when the private lawyers are doing like a lot of good job on the other side of the house, it's going to really harm the actual existing public lawyers that exist on the other side of the house, thinking that they're more inferior. Exactly when you say there's over glorification of private lawyers, on the other side of the house, it's going to be far worse because they're everywhere, literally, and they're taking the job markets of those public lawyers. Secondly, there's just going to be less agency for the public lawyers itself. They'll rather be private lawyers on the other side if that's the case, if their job, if they're going to work in, like, for example, like in state attorneys, anyways, then they can just be private lawyers and see whether or not it, it fits more for them because they give more benefits, for example. But lastly, if you want to be more, if you want more public lawyers under their side of the house, A, we prove that you can under their side because no one is actually simple, uh, like have incentive enough to go to private lawyers because they don't give any incentive or they don't give any mechanization why public lawyers are going to be better. But secondly, this is the problem of social media. So again, there will be no sustainable people to be public lawyers anyway under their side of the house. If they say that it's going to be a two year thing or whatever, then you can just work and do whatever you want. For example, if you are obliged and then you can just go back to being a private lawyer anyways. Um, just a small claim about how it's unfair for the government. Again, firstly, bar examination is quite hard. Like you need to learn a lot of things about how to be an advocate and then you can be an advocate at the end by this kind of examination. Going to be far worse for those kinds of lawyers that exist. It's very unfair. All those reasons negate. Thank you so much, DLO. Now to close the substantive case of government, I welcome government whip here, here. Um, say, um, really hate to do this. I'm going to be to do this. I'm going to Hello, am I audible? Excellent, clear. Um, your eye, some of yourself, for example. All right, um, uh, start my speech and two issues in my speech. One, how it limits the freedom of people that they so glorified about, but secondly, on the betterment of legal system. First issue then. On limiting the freedom of people. So a big premise coming from them is that government should not limit the freedom of fresh graduates, given that under our side to limit their avenue to learn within their interest because you force them to do internship in public attorney offices. Several responses to this. One, if you want to be a private lawyer, learning or internship in state attorney offices would also be beneficial for you as well. Why is that so? Two reasons. A, because it's relevant to what you do in private sector. Understand that bar exam is for you to become a lawyer in general, not just lawyer for business law, for example, and able to represent a client in general life. It can also be a lawyer on the field of taxation, criminal and administration issues that company also faces in which material in which in, you know that company also faces in which they also need to learn materials that are relevant to public lawyer like like you know criminal laws administration law and whatnot so because of that is 
that all the skill that you need in private law sector and also public lawyer is overlapping, you can still get something out of it that is within your interest as a fresh graduates who want to pursue bar exam. But secondly, I think law firm will appreciate more skills that you have, given that you know business uh business corporation have to deal a lot with administration process, for example, with government and whatnot. I think the the your experience with understanding how government works, how the you know, public attorney works, for example, will become a great avenue for you to be, you know, if if in the end of the day you still want to pursue, you know, private sector law firms. So if they say to you that it is not going to be beneficial at all for people who want to pursue you know private sector lawyer, we don't say we don't think that this is the case. But secondly that even if that is the case, even if you do limit to a certain extent that avenue to understand how private sector works and whatnot, understand that this is only temporary, right? You're only going to be obliged to learn to do internship for you know one year, two years, for example, in uh, uh, uh one year, two year, for example, as per what my uh, PMS told you. So I don't get why is the problem that significant if you know the problem is uh, if if we only take a small amount of time from you. This is minuscule in comparison. This is a minuscule problem in comparison to all terrorist responses, to all terrorist arguments on how it is important for you to expose this privileged bubble, you know, trap in bubble law students are to public state attorney. That is why the wing is this. If we don't actually limit the freedom of the people, we actually also allow them to learn more on public state attorney. But other than that, I think this is not such a big issue in comparison to all the problem, all the problems that they want to solve. That is on the betterment of legal system and exposing people to more chances at the end of the day. The second issue then on the betterment of legal system, I think this is clearly important because both sides want a betterment for the legal system. One of you is three things: one, we contextualize the problems that happen to state authority offices, i.e., under exposure, less quality and quantity of human resources, etc. Secondly, we've told you how impactful the aforementioned problems are because less quality and quantity of state authority means that we can not serve victims' interests in criminal court, for instance. But thirdly, we prove to you why our case can solve the problems, i.e., they will at least help process in prosecution and thought uplifting the burden of prosecuting office. Secondly, awareness of the issue will be help trigger social instinct from protected privileged law students. But lastly, if the condition is that bad, they have the social bargaining power to paralyze the issues, help people kickstart the reform from within. But what they told you then? First, they question the feasibility of our proposal because they said that we don't understand the issues in public state, uh, public uh, attorney law, law uh, office, right? But two responses to this. One, you can learn because you need to do this for better exam, therefore you can still understand. But secondly, in law school, you learn all sectors of law fields equally in basics. So you still understand that even for me who want to pursue career in private law. But they also told you on how people doesn't want to work as a public lawyer given that government treat them badly, i.e. underpaid, underappreciated, etc. And therefore you need internal reform instead of this. But several responses to this. One, I don't think money is the issue because then I have told you that money is not the issue, right? We frame to you that the issue is over glorification of the prestige of law firms, for example, media exposure and whatnot. That is why what you need to solve this issue is perspective balancing, which become the terrorist main contribution and never been engaged by them. And so far as there is no contract exposure anyway in the rest of the house, you will not solve this issue. But secondly, even if money is the problem that you will rise in this debate, we challenge this. It's not. We never told you that they are underpaid, severely underpaid, right? They are paid well, perfectly adequate for them to live just like other state apparatus. But maybe, yeah, they are paid less than private lawyer. But this, this doesn't make money become a really problematic, you know, issues that prevent them to become public attorney. Right? But thirdly, I'll flip this claim. Exactly when you expose state attorney offices with good quality lawyers due to this program, you'll fix the program. You fix the issues, right? It allows because it allows them to increase the institution's performance because there is an increase in public attention and highlight on the work of attorney offices. Given that you also have more human resources, that is the moment when you incentivize government to spend more funding to state authority when they actually perform better in our sub house. But fourthly, what is the comparative in their side? They want internal reform, but the problem is. This is severely lacking in mechanization. The only claim that they told you is that, oh, if, if the problem persists, then people will care about it and solve it because you raise the issues in, in, in side opposition. But I don't think this will solve it because the prerequisite is that if the prerequisite is that they are able to be creative on the possible possible solution of the problem. And yes, they will have the capability because you are I... learning about the basic oh, wait, sorry. Uh because I don't think that they, they will solve it, solve that anyway, because you know. Understand that in their side of the house, the status quo persists. No, all those problems that they mentioned already exist, and people still don't care. Governments still don't care. It shows to you 
that you cannot rely on status quo. You cannot rely on the existing people within that uh, within that institution to raise the awareness. What you need is to introduce a third party perspective. Is to introduce those privileged, uh, you know, law students, for example, who are living in a bubble of private law sector, for example, to learn how you know fucked up the system is, and therefore you can trigger them to raise concerns about this issue. That is when internal reform can actually happen in the sense that you only create stagnation. But lastly, they also told you on how internet have no power to solve the problem. Exactly when we oblige them, there will be more problem, hence they will, there, there will be more people in quantity, hence they will have strength in, power, in you know, quantity, for example. Uh, I think this can also be solved in our South Dallas. I think the full-time authority would be grateful for, for helping, uh, for those students helping them, with, uh, and therefore they will also have the incentive to listen. But sure, maybe at this point, you understand why reform is better in North South Dallas, but maybe you still buy their case on government obligation. Several responses. One, in status quo, government has already failed their obligation to do reform by themselves, and it's hard for them to fix as well, given how we contextualize the debate and that they are severely under personnel. Right. But secondly, we don't care about government obligation insofar as we prove to you that they can also achieve the benefit of law betterment with more likelihood that we provide to you in our case. Insofar as they provide little to no likelihood for them to do internal reform, when they oppose this proposal, I think we should win the debate. So how do you weigh this issue then? I think betterment of legal system is much more likely in our South Dallas, therefore very proud to propose. Thanks so much, Gov Web. Now to close the substantive case of opposition, I welcome opposition Web here, here. Hi, audible? Audible, but not visible. Okay, wait, I guess. Oh, can we pause the debate for a moment? Um, because the chair. Okay. Wants to reload their docs. Can I still type my speech? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Bicara ya, gengs. Prank. Great. Um, since the chair is now settled, um, I welcome Opweb here. Here. Hi. Audible now? Invisible or not visible yet? Not visible yet, Hezron. Okay. Hi. Gila rambut gua. Anyways. Um. Yeah. Uh. This is my first and last Alsa. I know, right? Grand finals directly. I know. Um, thank you for my teammates, <laughs> Rizky and Jones, for accompanying me until now. Um, yeah, thank you for dealing with all my tantrums and my equity jokes. I hope I do not do equity in this final speech. And yeah. Wait. Oh, timer, timer. Judge, I want to give you an intuition. 
if state is capable to make laws that protects women better to be able to work at the night safely, should we tell the woman to, hey, be a CCTV in every inch of Margonda Street, or for them to be female politicians that are able to make such law? No. Therefore, if we already identified to you that there isn't enough incentive because state is weak on how they treat the public lawyers, and therefore it should be the complication of the state to make that better, they lose this whole debate because it's a state debate. You yeah. should be aware of what state is supposed to do and not to do. And I don't believe with what Jason said, with the idea that state isn't capable to compensate public lawyers better. State can. The problem is state doesn't want to because yeah. the fact that state can give such a high compensation for like any other pejabat, for example, they are in BUMN but not to public lawyers, show to you that if they have the budget, they just don't want to. There's not enough incentive that's why our case flight 25 this kind of like you know government to treat the, uh, the public lawyers better because what i get from government case is that it's a victim blaming that the public lawyers are not compensated enough therefore we should make them to be able to find it themselves or change the whole structure that's a freaking weird case to frame it then this debate firstly the sole failure they should make government lose this debate is on why exposure is exclusive to this obligation of service period but also why the exposure is going to be good because today i only talk to you hey here's exposure but why is there good exposure even somebody i can tell you why it's exposure that is bad and would desensitize those people to actually be public lawyers we win this debate in large margin the second framing they try to disregard our public education money doesn't really matter it's, it's more like less notification about like public lawyers money is the biggest problem like the reason why almost of every first grade in ue right now want to, to, to be private lawyers is exactly because they need a huge pay because I believe that everyone in Alsa who is a student can believe in this. There's no why you want to be a private lawyer because you want to be rich because the only way you can pay for good that are good and go to vacation. Yeah. But like three things there. We see that there are enough incentive exposure for people to be public lawyers. Firstly, the lecturers that are public lawyers from like these kind of institutions. Like from from BWM, for example. Secondly, all this MCAO, like, like, you know, that is all not enough. If like government, if I want to say, ah, but like, what about like the displaced people in this kind of like, you know, small um cities, eh? We say there are a lot of like data available for you to find about news about how does it feel to be a public lawyer. You can always like watch like movies that are regarding to that. But secondly, this is exactly the problem. You need to incentivize the state to tell the, the kind of people that being a public lawyer is a lucrative job, it's a decent job for you to, you know, choose in your future, that you can help the state so you can help themselves, you can help yourself also to make sure that the wage pay is good enough for you to succeed in life. Three discussion. Firstly, is it a good exposure and really actually make people want to become public lawyers? I just want to note, and it's important panels, the fiat of this motion for government is only for these people to do a period to serve as like lawyers, maybe six months to like two years, I don't care. That's what government tried to say. There is no fiat for them to say that those people would stay being the public lawyer in this kind of firms. But I said it would be a huge turn off for those people that will disincentivize dis them instead to become public lawyers. Two reasons. One, we told you that in so far that the system is bad, then those people will have bad working experience also. They try to say that, ah, but when there are more of those people working in the public firms, they can change the system because there's like a huge quantity coming from Jason. Three things. One, no likelihood. Like look at the status quo right now. The amount of us who are freaking poor are freaking huge, but are we able to change the weak system of the state? We cannot. But like secondly, how can they change it if they're being substituted after every period of two years? It means that they don't even have enough time to change it because in government, the fear is only to make this become a sub period, not in a like freaking lifetime. Like thirdly, in so far that the public officials that are doing this kind of public firms, they are paying this kind of like public lawyers are still those who are corrupt, that do not have incentive to change. You cannot change them at all because those are the people that are playing the rules and playing the games. No matter how huge you are in quantity, you cannot play to offer balance their power, check and balance from Terra cannot exist within this regard. And that addition from Jason doesn't make sense. But like secondly, note that the derivation of this argument is very simple. That in so far that this response runs free because like, you know, PM to government whip never engage to this. You will give bad discourses about being a public lawyer because after everyone finished their like service period, they won't say that, oh my God, I feel so good when I was a public lawyer. People will say it's fucking rig, for example. They will say that like, you know, they regret to be there and they hate the government for making an obligation for them to be there. Therefore, this is out. The cognitive is simple. One, we are okay with organized progress, so like incentive for state to accommodate better. They will trigger like discussions that are good. That now, if people become like an intern of like you know certain public firm, for example, they are able to say that hey, it's actually not that bad. It's actually good. For example, I got like good like learning from my like seniors, like you know, um, like you know, senior lawyer, for example. But, like secondly, 
They might say, but with all that fragrance, still do not want to be like public lawyers. Exactly, that's because of money. That's not because, you know, turn to dismiss, right? Because like you do not get, give them enough compensation. In software, we taught you, why will incentivize state to give better compensation? So like, you know, to give this kind of exposure, they are good to make these courses about like people to be motivated to be public lawyers, we already win by a landslide. But like secondly, they, they want to talk about, like, you know, treatments for people. I get a very dismissive response about this on my POI because Jason told me that, hey, unfair, unfair, unfair treatment is symmetrical, you need to do internship. One, there's still a very huge delta judges. Like if I do internship in like, you know, BUMN, I only do it for three months. If I do the obligation in government, I need to do it for two years. So that's the kind of data you need to buy in this debate. And if somebody told you where it's harmful in government, you largen the harm in that kind of way. It's already about six. I'm not going to take that. But like, secondly, note that what they talk about is that, ah, but like you're still going to be unpaid in this kind of internship. I told you from like LO and DLO that there is a structural incentive for them to like do that, for example. But the problem with government here is that they tried to engage to this kind of personalized that we taught you about incentive, for example, if somebody they cannot engage on this, they lose the entire debate. But like lastly, should state be allowed to do this because this is how important is this house as the state. If state is incapable, why should you shift the obligation of the capability to the society to the first case in their case? Like that's the job of the state I told you in the opening. You can also shift it to the first case because of two reasons. One, they say that those faggots are privileged. They are not. That's why they become private lawyers because they need money to survive in the capitalistic world. And do not talk about like first case, they are like heavily privileged, like an owner of like law firm, like an pejabat tinggi. Those people, even in your side, they can always cheat the system. So these are not the people that we're talking about this debate. But like secondly, They've been obeying the burden of the education of like four years of being a lawyer for those people. And now you somehow expect them also to do like those kind of work for Jeb, um, for like the state for free or like for a very low compensation. I don't think that makes sense. But why then should be exclusively the obligation of the state? One, they try to talk about like vulnerable people or about victims. Even if we already told you why the kind of lawyers are working for the state, but even with our victims, those are the victims that state failed. Why would I care? Why would I be the one be responsible for that? Say should take the compensation to be better for them to be one to defending my case. But lastly, state failed to make this job lucrative. This is a piece of justification because it, you know, dismisses all the hard works of these all our students. We're proud to affirm. Oppose. Thank you so much, Opposition Whip. Now to summarize the case of Opposition, I welcome Opposition Reply. Here, here. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, been a pleasure. Give me a second. <laughs> Starting my speech, my reply speech. In three, two, and one. Two clashes. Firstly, on state responsibility to fix the system. Secondly, on freedom of the people. There are four things I'd like to discuss, discuss on the first clash regarding state responsibility to fix the system. Firstly, I don't understand why up until the end of government whip's speech, why private lawyers are the ones that are burdened by the failure of the state. Yeah. Jason's response to Hezron's POI doesn't add up as well. The state isn't capable. 
Exactly, that is the issue. We've told you since the very beginning that exactly state isn't capable. We need to tell them how they should increase their capability. But Hedron has told you, it's not that the capability does not exist. Yeah. It's that they don't have the incentive to do so. Yeah. Nobody is pushing them to do so. Exactly, under our side of the house, we've told you to three speakers why the incentive will increase. This has never been tackled because of, they told you on this side of the house how, ah, yeah, you need exposure for the rich, privileged individuals. We don't care about them insofar as the state has the biggest responsibility yeah. to fix the system. Like, yeah, that that's that's firstly. Second of all, if this issue is if their issue is exposure on their side of the house, how many layers do you need? For us to say that it's not exclusive. We've yeah. told you internships exist. Like if our students I go to actively to governmental institutions to learn how it specifically functions, how public lawyers functions. We told you that you can learn this through classes. Like it's not that if you are a private lawyer in FAUE, you only learn about hukum lingkungan or economy, but you also access things like ASPID, HAPA, whatsoever. You still access those kinds of classes at the end of the day. So exactly, they kill their own case when they say that people can learn because under our side of the house, yeah. we told you that exclusively uh, there is an exclusivity in the part or it's an exclusive to actually learn to you know uh, these kinds of things like you can still learn to other mechanisms the flaw in their case they haven't told you why it's exclusive to state attorney like yes. they haven't told you why the system is exclusive to teach these people or wake them up because of their privilege there's never been any analysis on that exactly thirdly you have to pay attention like if you want to convince this these individuals to actually you know make them allow that, you know, the public lawyer system is good. Then show them that it's truly really good. Show them that the resources exist to actually pay them, for example, or for it to actually be good. The problem is it hasn't shown exactly because the appreciation hasn't necessarily shown to begin with. Like this is exactly why the gravity of the argument exists. It's especially because, for example, the state hasn't shown enough effort. We want to alleviate those efforts. Why? Because there is now a lack of individuals who coming from the private sectors, for example, or private lawyers exactly enhance or opting into this option and therefore stay do not have an option and they have to focus with the people that they have remained that is the literally the logic of our case throughout in opposition but fourthly if they want an, an an additional argument on how you know there's going to be awareness of the people to criticize the system like it's unclear why it's only it's gonna be the public and not only the FH students, for example, criticizing the system. So, like, there hasn't been any analysis on that. All of arguments regarding exposure and awareness and criticism only exist on the RC because we were the one proving to you why, specifically, for example, we leave the state no choice to improve the system. We win on this first clash. Secondly, on the freedom of the people, we told you that this is an important choice for the functionality of the lawyers. Lawyers need their choice to function properly. Like, this is exactly the harm towards the private lawyers. We told you, like, even if they say that, oh, you can learn again. Are you serious? You need to go through four years of college exactly for you to become a private lawyer, for instance, or to become a public lawyer. It's not as easy. It's not as easy as flipping your hand. Exactly, we told you why the enhancement of the skills of these individuals will exist exclusively under our side. Because when you're able to determine from an early age that you want to become a public or a private lawyer, this is how you make sure that these lawyers function towards the state. And exactly the way that you allow more people to opt into public lawyers is exactly when you're able to convince them that it's a good system, and that's why structural changes are needed. Pay attention to this reply speech and your notes. This reply is all based on what happened to the debate. Government's reply will most likely become a straw man, a new case. So refrain from recency bias panels. New framing isn't allowed in reply speech. You pay attention to the substantive speeches and not to the reply. Yeah. We'll bring this trophy back to EDSOE Secretary Room. Proud to win. Thank you so much, opposition reply for the fine speech. Now to close the entire debate, I welcome government reply. Here, here. Mm. <clears throat> I will start my speech in three, two, three. Oh, sorry.
Okay. Uh, I will start in three, two, one. This is not this household for all law graduates to become public lawyer. They can win if do that motion reads is like that. The biggest mistake of E in this debate is they are trying to protect privileged law students such as Justin that live in North Jakarta, given the fact that this is debate from the perspective of government. I don't know why they think this is strategic. They suddenly try to run from their burden by saying that what state attorney office do is structural reform. The problem with this is we already told you that the prerequisite of structural reform is exactly to oblige fresh graduates from law school to enter the field because when there is no one entering state attorney office, there will be no political willingness from government and society to demand for structural changes. So government in the prerequisite analysis. This way, they cannot just dismiss my four layers of analysis in my first argument because it proved to you that the reason people don't go to state attorney office is not because of lack of money, but because other things such as imbalance of glorification. They cannot say that in status quo, we underpaid the apparatur negara because the fact that their pegawai negeri most likely they have a lot of money and tunjangan so I don't know why you can buy the analysis about underpaid in the side of the house because it's factually wrong three strategic flaws from side opposition one they're really inconsistent at factorization status quo at risky they said that indeed no one wants to enter state attorney office but suddenly John said that status quo enough to make sure many students enter public law and give exposure besides this is dismissive to my layer that proved to you imbalance of power and exposure indeed acts in status quo to attract private graduate to enter state attorney office but this claim cannot go hand in hand. The fact that in status quo opposition admit there is small number of people want to enter state attorney office prove that all the layers of alternative from Jonas are not enough. But secondly, there is fiat for opposition to say that increasing salary for a public lawyer can pass, but there is no fiat this can work. If government opposition in constantly impose the burden that under our side of the house, the uh, internship not going to work effectively because you're only printing the document, for example, that's the same premise under the side of the house because I can also say that in the side of the house, there will be less likely increasing of money due to the corrupt government. Therefore, opposition need to be charitable in this debate assuming that both proposal can work effectively in, in turn have power in both sides of the house or at state authority kind in both sides of the house which one is better therefore opposite you can as a judge can buy the worst mechanization of opposition and the, which, because it's not reasonable they cannot say that it's cannot work because it's fiat they cannot say that intern and public service is only printing document because it's unfair in that our side of house but thirdly limiting the right is confusing what is the outcome of this is it makes law fresh graduate depressed or feel bored i will just assume the best that it will make them upset because they can't directly work in AH AHP after their graduates but it's, it's only for two years in so far as opposition never the ex uh, picturize them how big the magnitude of the harm of you delaying two years of people that want to go in a happy in both sides of the house anyway. Uh, I don't think you can buy the argument coming from them. Right now, when it affects, uh, because if John said that people don't care with state attorney and status quo, exactly because you will not affiliate with them. Right now, when it affects you directly, such as your access to get certification or include in your CV, therefore more attachment to maintain well-being of this institution because it directly affects you. The reason as to why you don't care to give public demand to this state attorney office, for example, or the reason as to why a law student that works in a happy doesn't care about state attorney office is because they think that it not impact them directly. That's the moment we give more attachment and also direct impact to them when they become the intern in there or they work for two years in there that's the moment internal discussion exists because they also want to get betterment for themselves the practice of betterment that both lawyers in both sides probably want to get is insofar as they make sure that there will be check and balance to this state attorney office two classes number one talking about state attorney office but second knowledge in micro life but first, state attorney office. I think they use uncharitable characterization because if in both sides the privileged law graduate is that lazy and apathetic, they're not gonna care about your alternative anyway, such as increasing money. Because if the uh, uh, the privileged law student is that isolated in both sides of the house because due to the imbalance power of opposition uh, uh, between private law firm and also state attorney office, you are exacerbating an opposition. At least we try to break this echo chamber under our side of the house, regardless they stay or not. I prove in my last preemptive in my prime minister speech in the meantime at least state attorney office get exposure and also discussion exists because regeneration regeneration of intern keep access under our side of the house something that is not existing opposition but knowledge in micro level is also important because we posit to you that the byproduct is good insofar as opposition never prove why this is not important for being a public lawyer because you also a big private lawyer because you also need to gather client from government uh, apparatus for example i don't think you can buy this analysis proud to propose Thank you so much, government reply. Um, now that the debate is over, the partic debaters can stay in this main room while the judges are deliberating. The results are going to be announced um, soon in the closing ceremony, so don't forget to stay tuned. Um, just 
pay attention to the groups for any further information. Thank you.